Preston, she visited my lab in Science Park uh, on June 30th this year. And uh, I, I was really um, heartened by his uh, complimentary remarks on our research breakthrough, uh, which was on the development of a blood-based uh, biomarker test for Alzheimer's disease. So it's estimated that in the mainland, there's currently about, uh, I would say, 10 million um, Alzheimer's disease patients. It would likely grow to over 30 million by 2050. So this is a very substantial number. It's very important uh, to have access to uh, a, a larger uh, sample database. I would establish uh, collaborations with the clinicians, uh, with different hospitals in the mainland, so that we can, on one hand, you know, validate our research findings, and on the other hand, uh, we will have our diagnostic uh, tool to be available to more uh, uh, individuals in the mainland. Hong Kong has a lead now in some areas. Hmm. How do we make sure we don't lose out to others, like Singapore and Australia? Based on the CE's uh, new policy address, I think he highlighted a, a number of uh, policy measures in order to do that, to better attract the talents to come to Hong Kong. I think Hong Kong needs a, a broad range of talents. Scientists includes engineers, includes technologists, includes entrepreneurs, a really broad range of, of talents. We need to nurture more local talents. Uh, for example, encouraging more uh, you know, students to pursue uh, STEM education. If the uh, graduates you know, look at the Greater Bay Area as a whole, the opportunities are really all there for them to tap into. This is something Singapore does not have. We are members of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. In 2017, 23 of us, we wrote a letter to President Xi and and um, you know, emphasize the fact that we have a strong desire to participate in the national science and technology uh, projects. So if Hong Kong can set up a national level laboratory, I think it will go a long way to, to indicate that the uh, research achievements of our scientists in Hong Kong is recognized. Given the geopolitical tensions and you know the U.S. efforts mm. to restrict access to technology, um, do you worry this could also happen in other frontier areas of science, where collaboration across institutions is vital? Science really has no borders. I mean, we advance our knowledge because we want to bring benefit to society, and. Collaboration really is the key. There's, there's so many uh, you know, pressing issues, there's so many grand challenges, such as the aging population, such as sustainability. But these grand challenges could not be resolved just by you know, individual researchers. We are very glad to hear that you are the first female vice chancellor of the university. What are your visions and missions? Our mission is to, to advance knowledge right, through education research, and our vision is to be a leading university. Currently, there's the gender myth that, or that perhaps girls are not as good at science and technology. But I think we, we need to eliminate this kind of gender myth, and we can only do that by raising awareness, by sharing with them you know, successful uh, role models of uh, uh, you know, women scientists. I, I do believe that students, they are key stakeholder of the university. It's important to have their voices heard, and it's important to engage them and share with them about the development of the university.